Hey guys, how's it going? I just came back from Batman vs. Superman, and I got a lot to say about this one. Some good things, some bad things. So, here we go. So let's start out with some good things. Ben Affleck as Batman, whoo, I thought he was awesome. This movie really shows how badass the character truly is. There's no, uh, pussyfooting around, there's no no guns, no killing. He just does what he has to do to get the job done. I thought that was really awesome. A lot of people complained about, um, Christian Bale with the uh, voice, but he, I think the voice here is like, it does the job, it's very powerful, but it also doesn't sound like he has throat cancer. Just everything with Batman in this movie was done very well. It really missed the opportunity to make a solo Batman movie first before making this movie, which I would think would have been awesome. They did do a good way of transitioning him in, but I think a solo movie would have been great to do with him. Batman really steals the show in Batman vs Superman, we don't see enough of him. Now when I look at a movie like Man of Steel, I thought the movie is very good, it has a straight plot, it's easy to follow, and it doesn't go all over the place. It's just one straight story, it has a beginning, ending, and climax. Batman vs Superman goes all over the place. That's my biggest problem with the movie. It, it goes wherever it wants to go, there's plot holes, there's plot lines that don't go anywhere, there's plot lines that go everywhere but straight. It just doesn't make a lot of sense at some parts, and I think that's the movie's biggest downfall. Some other things I don't like about it. Superman, they make him look really kind of dumb in this movie. There's there's a few scenes where he just makes stupid decisions. And Lois Lane, she doesn't contribute anything to the movie. She's just a damsel in distress the whole time. You might as well not even have her in it because she causes a lot of problems in the movie. She has a plot line throughout the movie about finding out who shot this bullet. And it really doesn't lead anywhere. And it takes up like 20 minutes of the movie so there's no point in even having it. There's just so many scenes that we didn't need to see, and I don't know why they kept in the movie. It just made it very boring. Like, the first two-thirds of this this movie there was very, very boring. There's a lot of, like, dream sequences and, like, flashbacks and stuff like that. of Stuff that we don't need to see, and they just keep showing it over and over and over again. They did have bits and pieces of action to, to keep us awake at some parts, but it wasn't enough. And the movie's called Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. It's not called... Batman and Superman fight for 10 minutes, then become friends while a bunch of random shit happens. That's not the name of the movie. We wanted to see a little bit more of Batman versus Superman going at it, or at least tension building. It doesn't happen that often. Let's count the three times they meet. In the f first two acts of the movie, they meet once without the masks on, which is seen in the trailer. They meet again with the mask and the costume on, Superman's costume on, and there was no fight. He just says, yo, Batman, you gotta hang up this cape. I don't want to have to kill you, and then leaves. This is a warning. And then the third time they meet, they fight. That already shows you how little Batman versus Superman there actually is in this movie. So why call it that, really? But the movie really shines in most of its action sequences. The three best parts of the movie, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, is the scene where Batman and Superman actually fight. Uh, it, I, was, I was so pleased with that scene. It was done very well. I actually was rooting for Batman. I, I, this is kind of like a spoiler, I guess, but you knew they were going to fight. I was rooting for Batman during the fight. I, I, like, Superman made a lot of stupid decisions, and it made me think, like, this guy's stupid. We don't really need him anymore, so just, just kill him, Batman. I really wanted him to win the fight. That was definitely my favorite scene in the movie. The ten minutes that they did fight out of this two-and-a-half-hour-long movie called Batman vs. Superman. I think that was the, definitely the best part of the movie. There was another dream sequence where Batman was... Um, in the desert fighting all these guys, and that was really cool to see. And then there's another sequence, Batman in the Batmobile fighting a bunch of bad guys, and that was really cool to see. All the action sequences were done really well, I feel, spoiler, besides the last one with Doomsday. The last action sequence with Doomsday was very CGI enhanced, and it looked very cartoony. Like, all the other fights looked great, but this one they were like all jittering around and stuff and flying. It looked like it's the video game. And they just shoehorn Wonder Woman in. Wonder Woman has nothing to do with the story, but they just they just put her in a few scenes so they could say she comes in at the end because they they need to start introducing characters into this universe. It's kind of like they made one Iron Man movie, which is Man of Steel, great movie, and then they skip right to the Avengers without having a Captain America and a Thor. You, you catch my drift here. The only reason Doomsday's in this movie is so Batman and Superman can team up, which they show happening in the trailer, so it wasn't even a spoiler really. And Wonder Woman comes in so they can fight Doomsday. It's probably one of the more exciting parts, but it was just done very badly. It was all CGI, too much, too much. And some parts of the movie is done very well, that part too much. I did not like it.
Now let's talk about the villain for a sec. Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor is a very smart guy. Well, I guess it's not really Lex Luthor, it's Lex Luthor's son. But still, like, then why would you make him his son? He's just going to be some awkward guy who makes stupid jokes and isn't threatening at all. That's not a villain. Like, he tries to, like, be creepy and stuff like that with, like, his crazy laughs. He's not the Joker. He's not scaring us at all. He's never threatening. He just feels like this little idiot kid, with, who, idiot rich kid who's trying to cause mayhem in the city. There's no, there, if there's, if there's no fear behind him. There's no emotion that we feel when we see him or anything like that. He's just very dumb, and he wasn't used well at all. He had some good lines, but the way Jesse Eisenberg, when you see his face, you don't see a villain. You see a young little kid that's stupid. But once again, the movie should be called Batman and Superman Fight for 10 Minutes While a Bunch of Random Shit Happens and Explosion with Doomsday at the End. Yay. Could have been a Michael Bay movie. Nobody would have noticed. For the Batman aspect of it, I have to give it, like... An 8 out of 10. For the Superman aspect of it, I think they really set him back as a character. He, he, he was a lot smarter in Man of Steel. They, they, they made him a lot dumber in this movie. Lois Lane, same thing. She's really stupid in this movie. She makes a lot of dumb decisions. I think that that really sets the movie back. They did try to introduce a bunch of new characters like Aquaman and The Flash. and They shoehorned Wonder Woman in. But Aquaman and The Flash, they subtly, and Cyborg, they subtly introduced them, which was really cool. So, that was a good idea, I guess, because now they can make movies for them. But, anyway, so, that's all my time. I thought the movie was very mediocre. I'll give it a 6 out of 10, just for Batman. I think he makes up most of that. And, um, I'd recommend going to, see it, going to see it if you're a fan of Batman, or, I guess, Superman, kind of. And if you want to see them fight then I, I suggest waiting for it to come out on YouTube, the fight scene. If you want to go see it for the other parts of the movie, then I guess if you're a really big fan, go out and see it. Otherwise, you're not going to enjoy it. And that's all my time. Have a nice day.